Hello everyone. Welcome to this session. Today we are going to discuss the play Arms and the Man written by the famous George Bernard Shaw. So you've already read the play. It has got three acts in it. So you know the story. Today, the important thing is to discuss the themes of this play. Before moving on to that, let us just rewind what you've already learned and uh, let us discuss about George Bernard Shaw, Irish playwright, critic, polemist, and political activist. Bernard Shaw is regarded as one of the greatest English speaking dramatist after Shakespeare. So always there has been a comparison between the volume of works or the legacy of works written by William Shakespeare and George Bernard Shaw. And there is something called Shakespearean plays, Shakespearean dramas, as we call it. Likewise, we use Shawin plays for George Bernard Shaw's plays as well. When Shakespeare wrote 37 plays altogether, George Bernard Shaw has, his, has to his credit altogether 62 plays. And there is also one thing that you, you can like as remember about George Bernard Shaw is that he won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay in 1938 for his, uh, the play was Pygmalion. Later it was adapted into Pygmalion movie. So this movie has got the best screenplay award, Academy Award in the year 1938. So which makes him the person, the only person till date who has ever won a Nobel Prize for Literature and an Oscar, uh, Oscar Prize. So this is something really specific or unique about George Bernard Shaw. So he has got his contributions in the field of film and in literature as well. Bernard Shaw died in 1950 at the age of 94. So this play Arms and the Men is an anti-romantic comedy in three acts. So it is a story of, uh, we can call as the story of Reina, um, Sergius and Blanchley. It was written during the early 1890s, published in the year 1898. It was first performed, because it's a play, it was first performed at the Avenue Theatre in 1894, uh, 21st April. So when we study about, when we discuss about the literary period when Arms and the Men got published or first performed, we have to say that it was actually a transitional age, transitional period, where it was about the romanticism was about to end. So the romantic ideals or the, uh, the notion of idealism for everything commonplace or ordinary was about to end. And at the same time, it was about to be the beginning of modernism. So modernism, as you can recall it, modernism talk about the reality, the horrors of war, especially modernism we have to take into consideration the world wars. So people were uh, starting to feel or to realize the exact reality of the world of the existence. And people were starting to kind of like, uh, there is this disbelief sort of disbelief that was existing in society. So the idealism, the transition that was about to be like moving on to the age of modernism, where people started to realize that, okay, this is the actual truth. And the literature or the films of the time started to depict what, the, what was the exact reality and they started to picture or portray uh, the existing reality of the society. So that is the literary period. So we can call it as a kind of a, like a problematic literary period in the history of English literature because people or writers started to feel that, okay, this is something that we have been writing till this time, but we have to focus on what is the exact truth or exact reality at this time. And the setting, it is Bulgaria. Uh, background is Serbo-Bulgarian war. So Serbia and Bulgaria were uh, like the uh, nations, independent nations. Now in uh, earlier, it was Yugoslavia. Now it is Serbia and Bulgaria. In 1885, where the Bulgarians won in the historical battle of Slitvitsna. <laughs> So that is about regarding arms and the man. Now we can like focus on the major themes of the play, okay? So the first theme would be theme of war, definitely. And there is this romantic ideal 
uh, idealized notion that is kind of adhered, attached to war, right? Because soldiers are considered as heroes and fighting for your own country or sacrificing your life, your entire existence for the sake of your country's freedom or existence would be like it was considered as uh, even now it is considered as something of a greater value. But there is this other side of war, which is not really uh, gets portrayed in literature. That is what that notion is what George Bernardo is trying to deconstruct here. He is actually deconstructing the romanticized notion of war because what is exactly war? It is actually a grisly business uh, and no need to glorify it. We can acknowledge the fact that war is brutal. And the play is an attack on the false ideals of warfare and the soldier's profession. So everywhere soldiers are hailed as heroes uh, when they are victorious, when they fail, uh, that is not the case, right? So here also, he's actually satirizing the notion that, okay, this is not something that needs to be idealized. Okay, there is this profession, soldier, being a soldier is actually good. It is actually serving your country. That is actually good, but doesn't need to idealize that. Just because a soldier comes from back from a war doesn't mean that he is not patriotic. It doesn't need to idealize in such a way that a soldier has to earn the worth of his life by just uh, sacrificing his life. Doesn't need to be in that way. And also the play, it is actually portraying the real experience of being a soldier. Okay, for, uh, with the character Blanchley, Captain Blanchley, is actually, actually explaining to Reina about our... Uh, just by existing, Captain Blanchley is explaining what it means to be a real soldier, which means exhausted, starving, and being pursued. So this is something that every other soldier experience uh, in their daily lives, and they are constantly exhausted. They uh, they have that starving feeling in their uh, stomachs because uh, they're constantly on guard. They have to be vigilant. They have to be careful. They have to concentrate on war, on the war front. So this is the reality, which is everywhere in films or in literature, which is something that every time writers or artists, they forget to mention the fact or forget to portray the reality of the war, which is something we need to discuss in detail. So here also, the main theme of one of the main themes in the play Arms and the Man written by George Bernard Shaw is the deconstruction of the romanticized notion of the war. And then there is the theme of love. So we can actually club these uh, two themes in such a way that uh, there is this reconstruction of the theme of war and the theme of love because uh, the play questions highly idealized expressions of love. What is love? What is ideal love? Or what is real love? It is actually getting re uh, idealized and it is kind of like getting checked every now and then through different characters. Okay, so the characters in this play defy the norms like public and formal courting, parental approval, consideration of social status and wealth of each partner. So this is actually the norms that were existing uh, during when Shaw was writing this play. And these norms were approved as normal uh, when it comes to being in a, in a relationship. But here we have different characters, like say, for example, we have Luca, who is actually aspiring to be in a different social class. She wants something else. And Sergius is also kind of like, uh, like getting out of this uh, comfort zone and exploring love towards or um, admitting that I'm in love with Luca, not with Reina. So the theme of love, which is not something idea, which is not something that needs to be idealized like warfare, because uh, every time it is not that lovers, when they are in a relationship, they can be perfect, but it, it, it does not have to be the same way every time. Because Sergius is also when he was uh, being engaged to Reina at the same time, uh, the right at the moment Reina is out of sight, we can see that Sergius is after Luca flirting with Luca. Uh, 
And Reina is also not, admittedly, the perfect lover in this in her relationship with Sergius because when she caught sight of Captain Blanchley in her bedroom the very first day, she has had feelings for Blanchley. So that is again, it is it reveals that the relationship between Reina and Sergius is not ideal. It is not something that is uh, that we can call as a perfect romance. So the play portrays or play actually paints us a picture that there can be flaws, there can be uh, minute differences, there can be like mistakes happen in real life, and the play explores confidently explores this theme of love and uh, successfully deconstructs the theme of love and the yet another important theme in the play arms and the man would be class discrimination or this arbitrary nature of social status because that is something uh, gender or class or uh, if we are saying about in India, caste is something that is actually an identity that is constructed in society. That is not something that we are uh, like born with, not gender, but social class or social status is not something uh, that we have uh, like as such. It is something that we are like kind of born into and uh, somehow we ended up being in a particular social class. Sho believed in the equality of all people and he kind of despised, he loved discrimination based on gender or social class. And that's why he is actually allowing his characters to explore much deeper. It is not something that you, you have to be in the social class. Like in Luca's character, we see that she aspires to uh, belong to a different social class, not to her mediocre middle class. She wants to be in an aristocratic class and that's how she ended up being in a relationship with Sergius and Sergius also is ready to compromise on his social class his social status in such a way that he became ready to confess his love or admit his love for Luca because Reina and Sergius they belong to this aristocratic elite class of society where both of them are from military families but here we have Sergius confessing his love towards Reina which is again actually an eye-opener to everyone so like in Sergius's and Luca's characters Shaw is actually describing that anything is possible. It is not something that, that you have to stick on with your social class. And when Catherine, that is Reina's mother's character, Catherine, uh, when we see, when we analyze Catherine's character, we can see the kind of snobbery or the person, the snob person that she is. And she is actually not kind of like she despises the lower class people or she doesn't have the that class, the level of class that needs to be uh, fit into the higher or elite class. And the play also attacks divisions of rank with characters like Blanchley, Sergius and Petkoff because we can clearly identify that even Sergius uh, confesses or admits that Captain Blanchley has got leadership qualities, he's a very good soldier. So even then he belongs to a different lower rank than Sergius and Petkoff. But on the other hand, Sergius and Captain Petkoff doesn't possess that leadership quality or that eminent uh, leadership quality that a leader is supposed to have. So that is how uh, the play actually uh, like gives us a clear idea that there can be differences, there can be uh, class differences or gender differences that doesn't um, make a person, that doesn't force, that, that shouldn't force a person to be in such a uh, place of in his or her own life. So that is how class discrimination is being portrayed. And also definitely there is this uh, differentiation of youth and maturity. The differences between young and old, inexperience and maturity, because with age comes maturity. That is what something that uh, that is a complicated picture, because even for younger people, we can see that there is a uh, they can also be vibrant at the same time. They can also welcome change as well. But sometimes they can act as silly and naive, very innocent people. And age at the same time, it can mean realism and intelligence, maturity. But at the same time, there are people, older people who kind of have difficulty in accepting those uh, differences or social changes. Or uh, there is, uh, there can be some sort of a kind of disengagement from uh, because of age. 
So there is this disparity between youth and maturity, there, which is clearly George Bernard Shaw is exploring in the play Arms and the Men because we have Raina being young, Raina, uh, Blanchley, Sergius being young people uh, and Luca. And we have Nicola and uh, Raina's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Petkoff, uh, Catherine Petkoff being the generation, older generation. And we can clearly see the differences between them, the differences, the changes. It doesn't have to be ideal. It doesn't mean that with age comes maturity. Sometimes being young, uh, younger people can also be mature actors, mature people. So these are some of the important themes that are explored in the play Arms and the Men written by George Bernard Shaw. Thank you for listening.